Welcome back to the Discord Mead series. We're in episode number eight, and I have Dustin here, the leader of this uh, season. I don't really know what these are. This <laughs> this Mead's journey um, here to talk about what we did and what the process was. This is a really interesting one. We landed on a macadamia honey boche with vanilla pecans and bourbon all added and if you don't know what the series is it is a it's my way to hand the reins over to someone from my discord to take charge and say hey i want you to make this specific thing and they have the ability to either you know kind of come up with things themselves but the whole intent is to use the community that is discord to create this recipe and that's what dustin did so uh, dustin let's let's First of all, introduce yourself, talk about maybe your mead making experience, and then tell us how did we get here? What happened? <laughs> yep. So once again, I'm Dustin. Um, been part of the channel group Discord for a little while. Um, I started out making mead with my dad when I was younger. Um, and then uh, we used uh, a lot of your videos actually to help us through that process. And so you know, just kind of uh, had a fun time, like learning the, you know, started out with just like mead in a one gallon mm -hmm. jug with a balloon on top as an airlock. And then, you know, just kind of like went through from that point on. And then, uh, yeah, you know, got to this point. Uh, so then for the mead, we kind of based it off of uh, maple pecan pie. Mm -hmm. um, so we went for macadamia nut honey because that had like a bit of like a little bit of nutty character to it that we were thinking that was gonna help playing with the pecans really well we went through like a number of yeasts i posted a few that i thought might be well i asked some people in the in, like the discord what they thought like might help with uh characters bringing out certain profiles and um we ended up on d254 which yep. um stated that it gave uh, a bit of a nuttier profile uh once again trying to play in like cons just trying to once again finding like the honey that worked well with it kind of landed on macadamia nut once again because it had the nut of your profile mm -hmm. and um the maple syrup was also part of that too uh, getting yeah. that kind of richness i'm guessing you guys were going for there yeah since it was like um maple pecan we we're hoping for mm -hmm. to get some of that maple character in there yeah. somewhere and um you know Bosch Boshane, because once you're like just naturally making like pie like it some sugars get caramelized and so we're like oh like that probably like works well with the flavor profile of trying to match maple pecan pie and then somebody uh brought up the point of like oh like some maple pecan pies have like a little bit of bourbon added mm. and so then we were trying to figure out how exactly to get that um flavor profile in there like possibly like fortifying it possibly um soaking the pecans in the bourbon but then we kind of just realized that like, you know, maybe just adding it in would be a lot easier than trying to like roast it like with the pecans mm -hmm. or like just trying to soak the pecans in there. And so, yeah. And then um, basically that was about it. We added yeah. a little bit of vanilla in there because, you know, same thing with the pie flavors, trying to hit those as much as possible. For sure. Well, and the fun thing about this recipe is it, it um, I feel like the recipe was presented to me. And there was a little bit of a learning thing as we went along because some yeah. ratios of things like I feel like I could post two recipe cards of what the original started as and then where we landed on post all of that. Um, so we kind of started with, uh, well, I'm going to admit something to you. I messed up ratios in the beginning. So here's like the, the original card that was presented to me. And then, the, just for people who are watching the video yeah. now, here's the version that I ended up making. On the original card, I just realized this today, the, the request was to do 1.5 pounds of macadamia blossom honey, mm -hmm. Moshade, and then two pounds of maple syrup. I inverted those by accident. Nah. So I did two pounds of Boshade macadamia honey for 30 minutes, 1.5 pounds of maple syrup, um, and then some of the other ratios we'll talk about. But we started off by taking that honey, which unfortunately is not necessarily super local to me. And so there's a couple of these ingredients I had to really kind of outsource via mostly internet sources, uh, which made this brew a little bit tougher. 
but still an interesting one. We started with our honey. I did my two pounds in a pot. We got it up to not a boil, but just a warm, I think it was like 190 around that range. Um, temp for 30 minutes, changed that profile some. We then cooled it down and we put our water and our uh, 1.5 pounds of maple syrup in, mixed that all up. I had purchased 500 grams of the D254. Uh, and so I have a lot of that yeast left over. So we poured in that yeast, uh, however, I think it's two or three grams at least. And that kind of kicked off our primary fermentation. After that, we went ahead and waited the 24 hours or so. I front, not front loaded, I added all of my nutrient at the 24 hour mark because I had started a bunch of projects and I was lazy. So we added our Fermate O at 24 hours. I didn't do a staggered nutrient schedule and continued to ferment. My starting gravity for this was like 1.104 and I was anticipating it to ferment out. It did not. <laughs> it stopped at 1.020. I don't know why. I gave it plenty of nutrients. Maybe if I had done the staggered nutrient, it would have fermented out completely. But the fermentation time was like two, three weeks and it started to clear. So I knew it was, it was done. Took that gravity reading 1.020 after the fermentation. And I was a little confused, but we made it work. And then uh, we racked into a new container. This is where that the ratio of things gets weird because on the original recipe card for this one gallon brew, we were looking at 4.5 pounds of pecans. As we quickly learned, it's a lot of pecans. I, I had bought more than that. I had bought five pounds or something like that. Anyways, we we bought, I bought those pecans. I went ahead and roasted them all. And then looking at this container, which I wish I had it next to me because it is almost comical. The container is this big. Half of the pecans put in a bag took up half the container. So if I'd used all of the pecans, it would have been like some would have just been sitting on top without any liquid. It just would have been in there. So we ended up using half of the pecans from the original roasted in an oven for, uh, it was at like 150 or 160 for 20 minutes, something like that, trying to get rid of the oils. That's the intent there. We threw those pecans in there for, I think it was only three or four days because it was a quick, quick uh, turnaround with flavor with that amount of pecans. And then we added a, uh, a cup. Oh my gosh, I'm getting my ratios messed up. I think it ended up being uh, one cup of Woodford Reserve bourbon and then a vanilla bean in for roughly uh, seven days. The ABV on this thing is like a big question mark because if you're looking at the numbers post fermentation, it'd be like 10 point something, but we've like lightly fortified it because of the bourbon. So it's like probably a 12%. I don't know. I'm not doing that math. So we have that. We, after we had done all of those things, we went ahead and bottled it and that's what we have. So this thing is a, a mystery ABV, you know, on here I put 10.5% ABV ish because ish. I don't I don't really know and uh, but we have all those profiles the last thing that I didn't add that was on the original card was the brown sugar which if someone's making this at home if your brew ferments out or maybe you want it to be even sweeter go ahead and add your brown sugar in I, I just didn't do it because it was gonna be too sweet I was a little worried about it just being disgustingly sweet at 1020 and then adding a half a pound of you know brown sugar or whatever so you could do that here's the card again for anyone who's interested of how to make this but i i'm curious i uh hope hope it's good <laughs> all right you ready to you ready to yeah. pour it and try it of course so okay no hiss that's good i always worry about that hopefully no hiss on your end yeah. too so doing good here's what we got it was not super clear when I bottled it. I kind of pushed this along. Uh, the timeline of this is roughly, I want to say between 45 and 60 days for this whole process, which is quick in the grand scheme of mead making. So anybody listening, I know that's quick, but let's see what it's like. So uh, let's go for a nose first. Tell me what you get. I'm definitely getting like the, um... You can still smell like the sweetness 
mm-hmm. from it quite a bit. So, yeah, it's definitely sweet on the nose. I'm trying not to say I've tasted it. Obviously, I've tasted this thing. Yeah. So I'm trying to like avoid saying words to put it put it in your brain. <laughs> but I'm remembering now a couple weeks ago when I tasted it. What else do you get? I get the vanilla um, on the nose pretty well. It's a nice little softness. Yeah, and then um, since I do drink bourbon a decent amount, I do like have you can smell like that hint like a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. It's interesting when you mix that bourbon character with the sweetness that's here too. It's kind of in the vanilla. It's all this like it's odd. I don't get maybe it's because there's a lot going on here. Not a ton of honey. I'm not like you know I could find it, but it's mm-hmm. like a richness. I feel like I get more maple syrup on the nose. Yeah, no, definitely more maple syrup. And I'm like, I don't like, I'm not picking up too much of like pecan. Like it might just be because mm-hmm. I don't eat pecans enough to know what they smell right, like. Right, right, yeah. But... Well, are you ready? Man, yeah, let's, let's go, go for it. <laughs> All right. Definitely a very, very interesting <laughs> flavor coming off of there. Let's talk before we go before we go flavor. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the mouthfeel because that's the one thing that immediately hit me. The amount of pecans that were added in here really give this a uh, tan like a bite. Not a bite's not yeah. the word I'm looking for. <clears throat> it has something here. Yeah, it's definitely that that dryness. Yeah. Definitely kind of um <laughs> It's sapped Your every feels it for sure. every <laughs> bit of moisture is out of my mouth right now. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I guess is from the pecan because it's still. I mean, it's still got some sugar, so it's not really dry. It's weird. It's mm-hmm. like a weird complex of like the, you're right. The dry dryness of like a red wine, but sweetness that's still there to like kind of back it up. It's a funky mm-hmm. back and forth. And it definitely like stays on your lips. Because I was like just licking them and it's like, oh, that's still yeah. a lot of flavor there. So what about the flavor? Yeah. What about the flavor? What are you getting there? So, I mean, like, once again, I don't know if it's just because I drink a lot of bourbon, but yeah. um, it is very smooth to mm-hmm. me. It's like you do taste the maple syrup. And then, um, like, once again, I don't know if it's just because I don't eat enough pecans, but like, I'm not really getting too much pecan flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, you definitely taste... The vanilla, that's mm-hmm. like, that's the smoothness that's in the background there. I definitely think the pecan is there. The problem is, no, I say problem. The complex thing about this brew is that mm-hmm. you've got, you've got so many characters coming from that honey, which is like kind of fruity, kind of tropical. The little mm-hmm. bit of nuttiness is kind of iffy on that. Maple syrup is like this warm uh, blanket around this. The bourbon's there, of course. Vanilla is just like a softness. And then you're looking at that that um, pecan, which is arguably a delicate flavor in some mm-hmm. regard, but I think if you didn't have so many competing factors, this would be very pecan heavy. I mean, considering how much was put into there, like yeah. I'd be surprised if there was none at all, but you're right, it is it is masked by some mm-hmm. other flavors here. Yeah, and when it comes to the pecans, like we, I was trying to get like a group feel of like, cause I, I haven't like worked with nuts in mm-hmm. any of my alcohols made. So I was trying to get like a group feel and like I heard like these amounts and I was like looking up on the internet and I was like, all right, like this seems like maybe the right amount. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, seeing like the pictures of like the brew process, I was like, Ooh, yeah, that's a <laughs> lot. And so. Well, uh, no, I mean, that's the thing is I, I hadn't, I hadn't yeah. really worked with them much either. So in truth, so it was, it was kind of interesting. I was like, I know this is a lot, but maybe it is proportionate. So it wasn't until I'd bought them. And then started to like really consider like what how much volume I had versus mm. how many pounds of pecans I had to deal with. So I think it that ratio of would work um, if you doubled your volume. You know what I mean? Like that. Mm. There's some sure there's some volume thing here. Overall, I, I really like this brew. It does need some time. I yeah. think give it like I don't know a couple more months that everything will mellow a little bit more. I don't love the. I think it's from the pecans that that dry moisture grabbing tannin vibe that's going on here. That's the only thing mm-hmm. that really gets me that I'm like, ah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, no, but I, I like I also like really enjoy like just how well this tastes and like mm-hmm. I enjoy like 
a lot of odd complexities to like stuff I'm drinking. And so it's like, it's a fun, like mm -hmm. wave of like trying to figure out what's going on in my mouth right now. <laughs> this has a long finish for sure. There's like all this, mm -hmm. it's like a roller coaster. You got, you got these things popping out and then it's like this. So that's kind of fun though. What I, what I enjoy yeah. about it. And I would also be interested in like seeing like what the brown sugar would have mm -hmm. added as well. Like how much like that would have like, I really wish this had fermented out. And I, again, I, I don't really know um, other than to say that somehow this maple syrup was not totally fermentable or that the Boshang process had, which is possible, had taken enough of these. Like there's some deep science that Carlos, my, my buddy, Texas Longhouse Mead has done that's like talking about the the not necessarily non-fermentable sugars that come with Boshays, but like the, I don't He's he's way smarter than me. So anyway, mm. something about that <laughs> could be there. Um, other than that, I mean, I gave it the right amount of fermate dough. Maybe I just didn't do the staggered nutrient schedule. So if people were to make this, though, I think that the brown sugar would be really interesting to see yeah. added in. And I do remember, like, we were trying to figure out. Like, I, I was trying to figure out, like, how much, like, non-fermentable sugars, like, would pop up. And um, I believe, you know, Texas Longhouse did, like, reach out and say, like, like it really shouldn't affect it like all that much and like it shouldn't like do anything to it and so i was like okay like then like we should be like good to like go through with it and yeah. so just one of those things that happens i guess yeah i mean it's a that's another testament of yeast don't always just follow whatever their book you know their their stat says so this has been really fun though and what i love about mm -hmm. this recipe is that it is it is complex and the, you know, there I'm probably going to need to put in the recipe card some alternatives to say if you don't have the the D254, maybe yeah. try this yeast. If you don't have macadamia honey, maybe try this. Because I think taking out, or not taking out, but subbing out those variables will still give this a really cool taste. Even if you used wildflower honey and, I don't know, comparative, QA23. Let's just throw that out there because it's a Ace of Glen idea. So if you sub those things out, keep your pecans, keep your bourbon, your vanilla bean, add your brown sugar. I still think whatever variables, whatever honey you use could be interesting there for people to do this. I don't want people to look at this recipe and go, well, I can't get macadamia blossom honey or I can't get this yeah. yeast. Um, so don't be afraid to try it if you're interested in trying this. But I, I really enjoyed the process and I, I hope that mm -hmm. it's been uh, it's lived up to the months and months we've been working on it for you. <laughs> Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's it's a lot better than I thought it may have turned out. That's for <laughs> sure. Because I was like, like this once again. This was kind of like sort of um, like a, I haven't done a lot of these processes, and mm -hmm. like it just sounds cool. So yeah, um, like I'm really happy with like how it actually like this is like definitely like one of my favorite meats that's like come out like of like my tastings like over the years, and so it's been like cool. I'm really glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, I'm happy Maybe. that you enjoyed it. I hope I'm glad it's not been a total, total uh, bomb. Well, I have good news for you. Um, good news and sad news, depending on how you, you view it, because you are the Discord mead leader now. And now you yeah. have you get to pass the torch on to the next person because the week that this is posted, mm -hmm. Dustin's going to be in the Discord. His Discord name is It's D Wheels, and he'll be in the Discord. I'll make sure he's he's found findable. And uh, he's going to be picking the next leader for number nine. So as a leader, you get to, to kind of steer the ship on where you want the next one to go. And depending on how crazy you go, I, I should be able to make it. You know, there's not been any any mead yet that I've not been able to make. That's not a challenge, Don't you know, <laughs> but you should be able to, to steer the ship and hopefully make a mead recipe that you want me to do alongside that just like dustin has one he is gonna i'm gonna send him 50 bucks for his uh hard work and willingness to to lead us you will also win 50 dollars at the end of this whole um, process and be a part of the tasting for said mead you're welcome to brew it as well you don't necessarily have to but the intent of this series is for us to present a recipe that hopefully we can get a bunch of people to brew in the discord as a kind of a communal brew so dustin thank you for for leading this one and like i just said you're gonna get to choose the next person so whatever mm -hmm. things are thrown your way you know you can kind of go yeah i love that or oh that's a bad idea mm -hmm. you know so feel free to 
to hop in the Discord and chat with Dustin as he's picking the next one. So thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, no, definitely was a very pleasurable experience. I'm looking forward to the next ones that come out as well. All right. All right. Well, we will see you in the Discord. So uh, see you guys there. Cheers.